Nick Mullins is the Minnesota Vikings backup quarterback. Probably. Matthew Collar here from inside TCO Performance Center. We just got off the practice field and spoke with Kevin O'Connell, head coach of the Vikings, about the trade for Nick Mullins. He was playing for the Las Vegas Raiders. The Vikings send a conditional seventh round pick to get Mullins here as their backup quarterbacks have really sputtered in the two preseason games, averaging just 5.7 yards per pass attempt, and uh, that number was even lower against the San Francisco 49ers where they really struggled offensively. So now the question is, which quarterback do they cut? Is Mullins locked in as their backup quarterback now that they have traded technically an asset to bring him in, or is he part of a competition that still exists? Now, Kevin O'Connell said that the competition is still ongoing between the quarterbacks, now three quarterbacks, to be behind Kirk Cousins. The other night after Kellen Mond struggled, he said, we're just looking for somebody who could win a game if we bring them in off the bench. Well, out of the three, the only guy who's ever actually won a game is Nick Mullins, but he's only won five of 17, and that was playing with a very good coach in San Francisco and Kyle Shanahan, and also a very good team that uh, Jimmy Garoppolo was able to take to the Super Bowl and to the NFC Championship, but Mullins couldn't get a whole lot out of those teams. That's not necessarily what you're looking for, though, in this situation. What you're looking for is if Kirk Cousins has to miss one game or two games that Nick Mullins could come in and win one when you absolutely need it to get you in the playoffs. Is it worth a conditional seventh round pick? It's actually about the best you can do for a conditional seventh round pick. When you look around the NFL, there are very few backup quarterbacks who can even win a single game. And there's lots and lots of examples of players who have had their chance and struggled and lost and sunk seasons because the backup quarterback had to come in. There's only a handful of teams that have anybody higher than that level, say the Tyrod Taylor with the New York Giants or Teddy Bridgewater in Miami. But the thing about those quarterbacks is they cost something on the salary cap. And when the Vikings were getting their roster in order, when they were doing extensions, when they were signing players from free agency, they didn't have a whole lot of extra money to work with. So they could not allocate $2.5, $3.5 million to a quality backup quarterback to come in behind Kirk Cousins. So they brought back Sean Mannion, who has been in the Rams system before. He was there in 2015 and a few other seasons before ending up with the Minnesota Vikings. But Mannion has just not performed very well at all. And they were hoping when they drafted Kellen Mond, the previous regime did, that Mond would develop, be the backup, and maybe in a perfect world scenario, someday be this team's starting quarterback. On draft night, they compared him to Teddy Bridgewater. But it's just never materialized. Kellen Mond has had this issue with being slow on reads and not dealing well with pressure really since last year, but you could have seen it and there was reason to give him more time, which was last year he went through COVID. He got behind in training camp. It was his very first time on an NFL field. He was a guy that mostly played out of the shotgun and not under center. There were a lot of adjustments that needed to be made, but by year two, when those adjustments don't happen and he's still throwing bad interceptions, not operating the offense very well, not making plays out of structure in the preseason games or in practices. The Vikings did what they had to do, which was go out and get another quarterback in Nick Mullins. Should you actually have confidence in Mullins to win a game if Cousins goes down? More than the other two, but not a whole lot. I mean, when you look at his career, he's thrown 26 touchdowns, 22 interceptions. And if you look a little deeper into the pro football focus stats, he only has 16 big time throws and 31 turnover plays in his career. Last year, when he had to play a game for Cleveland, he averaged under five yards per pass attempt in that game. Cleveland almost won, uh, but he averaged still under five yards per pass attempt. So the Vikings still don't have a backup quarterback situation that you can be confident in but most teams don't. And there's no real reason to be concerned about this. Here's why. Number one, Kirk Cousins has a remarkable record of being durable and being healthy. He's played almost every game since he became a Minnesota Viking. The only one he missed due to health was last year when he had COVID and they lost at Lambeau Field. 
which probably 98% of the backup quarterbacks in the NFL lose that game at Lambeau Field against Aaron Rodgers, who was marvelous uh, and eliminated essentially the Vikings from the playoff race that night. But that there aren't many backup quarterbacks, even the good ones, that were going to win that game. Is Jacoby Brissett winning that game? Like Probably not, considering the circumstances and how good the Packers were. If the Vikings are only a 500 team and they're one win away from being 9-8 and eight versus 8-9, and nine, it's okay if they lose that game because those are no there's no difference between being 9 and 8 and 8 and 9. There is no get into the playoffs at 9 and 8 and just hope that something great happens for you. That means you were just mediocre. Now there might be a case for hey if you're trying to win the division that maybe that one game makes the difference. But more likely than not, if you're already a really good team that's in place to win the division, then you do have a chance to go deep even if you are missing Kirk Cousins and you lose that one game because of your backup quarterback situation. So the Vikings did something that made a lot of sense, which was to get someone with experience who could possibly operate their offense. I'm sure he'll need a few weeks to acclimate himself, but he's been in similar offenses. But this is not something we should be talking about as much as we do. I understand why it becomes the the biggest conversation at camp. And in fact, the Minnesota Vikings should be thrilled that is the biggest conversation of training camp because there hasn't been other drama. In fact, they got some good news about Andrew Booth Jr. It seems like he'll be ready for week one. Uh, Irv Smith Jr. was back out there practice, starting to actually do things. Even the stuff that's gone wrong has not gone seriously wrong for the Vikings, except when it comes to their backup quarterback situation. So they have it resolved. It seems for now, we will keep a close eye on the preseason game and how much Nick Mullins is actually going to play. The other conversation is which one of these guys do they cut? Do they cut Sean Mannion, who seems to get along with Kirk Cousins really well and know the offense really well? Or do they cut uh, Kellen Mond, uh, who is the younger guy and might still have potential? Now, the question of the potential at this point in his career, after a couple of years now, after two years getting a chance, how much potential is there really there? Now, he has physical skill. He's got a good arm and he ran a fast 40, but has not put that together really in any way. So do they keep the person that maybe the veteran starting quarterback would rather have around as a practice squad quarterback? Or do they go with the player that might have a little more potential down the road? Think if they keep Kellen Mond and they feel like he develops next year, then you still have maybe two years of a cheap backup. It's not a, you know the most exciting question to ask, but one that they're going to have to answer because more likely than not, Kellen uh, Mond or Sean Mannion will be cut at the end of this training camp, but it appears it will not happen right away, that it will happen at the end of camp. Uh, and they'll continue this competition to see if Nick Mullins can bring something to the table that's more than the other quarterbacks. So an issue somewhat resolved, but very few teams ever have it really resolved. Unless you have Case Keenum or Randall Cunningham or Joe Cap. So I guess sometimes it works. All right, Matthew Collar from Inside TCO Performance Center. Listen to the Purple Insider podcast every day, wherever you get your podcasts. Read purpleinsider.com. We'll catch you next time.